malignant hyperthermia is a severe, potentially fatal reaction to certain anesthesia drugs. It is an inherited genetic disorder in which the body goes into a hypermetabolic crisis when exposed to certain anesthetic gases or depolarizing muscle relaxants, such as succinylcholine. It causes calcium accumulation in the skeletal muscle cells which leads to sustained muscle contraction and increased ATP and oxygen consumption. Eventually, cells go into anaerobic metabolism and acidosis due to lack of oxygen and muscle cells break down and release contents like potassium and myoglobin into the bloodstream, which will lead to arrhythmia and renal failure. Malignant hyperthermia will be fatal if not treated promptly. That's why it is important to recognize signs and symptoms early to prevent deterioration. Signs and symptoms can occur as early as a few minutes after exposure to the triggering agent and up to 48 hours after exposure. An early sign of malignant hyperthermia is hypercapnia, in which there is too much carbon dioxide in the blood, which will cause tachypnea as the body is trying to blow off the CO2 and tachycardia. As the name suggests, Patients can have hyperthermia or high fevers due to its hypermetabolic state. Body temperature can rise 1 degree every 5 minutes. Muscle contracture or rigidity can happen especially at the masseter muscle that causes jaw tightness in which the patient's mouth can barely be opened. However, it might be hard to detect if the patient is still under the effect of anesthesia. As mentioned earlier, patients can go into acidosis with low pH, elevated CO2, an elevated lactate level. Renal failure can happen due to rhabdomyolysis or muscle breakdown. You may see concentrated brown-colored urine and oliguria or low urine output. Because of muscle breakdown, potassium leaks into the bloodstream and can cause cardiac arrhythmias such as tall, peaked T waves, widened QRS. Treatment Early recognition and prompt treatment are the keys for approaching malignant hyperthermia. Studies have shown that aggressive treatment can lower mortality rate from more than 70% to less than 5%. There is a 24-hour Malignant Hyperthermia Association of the U.S. hotline to help healthcare professionals to prepare and manage malignant hyperthermia crisis. Fortunately, there is an antidote for malignant hyperthermia called dantrolene. It relaxes the skeletal muscles and stops the sustained contraction, and therefore, prevents the hypermetabolic process. Dantrolene is given in a dose of 2.5 mg per kilogram until improvement of symptoms, up to a maximum dose of 10 mg per kilogram. It is then continued at 1 mg per kilogram every 4 hours for 24 to 48 hours, and patients should be transferred to ICU as malignant hyperthermia can reoccur during that period. Other supportive treatments include bringing down the hyperthermia by cooling the patient with chilled IV fluids, putting ice packs at the neck, axilla and groin area, and cooling blankets. Cooling measures are discontinued when body temperature lowers to 38 degrees Celsius as the body will continue to cool down. Hyperoxygenate the patient, which helps to flush out the carbon dioxide and respiratory acidosis. Monitor and treat hyperkalemia as indicated. Monitor renal output and give IV fluid and diuretics to increase renal perfusion. In summary, malignant hyperthermia is a severe reaction to some anesthetic gases or a muscle relaxant called succinylcholine. It causes muscle rigidity, fevers, tachycardia, and respiratory acidosis. If not intervened quickly, complications such as respiratory failure, renal failure, hyperkalemia, cardiac arrhythmias, and death can happen. Treatments include giving dantrolene, which is an antidote for malignant hyperthermia, active cooling measures to bring down the body temperature until it reaches 38 degrees Celsius, support with oxygen and IVF to prevent respiratory and renal failure.